Hi everyone, your latest weekly video update. This is Alex Tardy, National Weather Service Office in San Diego. More Santa Ana winds are in store for this week, Wednesday through Friday. This will continue our trend of very dry air and elevated fire weather risk. Let's get down to the details for this upcoming week and possibly chances of rain coming up. Here are the highlights. Santa Ana winds, they're going to develop Wednesday as early as the morning, increase through Thursday morning, then weaker Santa Ana winds on Friday. This is event number 10 for the year. Northeast winds of 20 to 30 miles per hour in the wind prone areas with gusts of 40 miles per hour. Strongest winds will be in the Inland Empire and around the mountain passes area, such as I-215 and I-15 split at Cajon Pass. We're going to see above normal temperatures, much above normal, uh, as much as 10 to 14 degrees above normal for the coast and valleys all the way through the weekend. Looks like Saturday is the warmest. Low humidity, so uh, percentage-wise, 15 to 25 percent poor recovery at night. Uh, but this also means cold temperatures at night for the areas that are in the mountain valleys because the cold air sinks in that very dry air. So we're also uh, looking at our first chance for significant rain in December. Yes, right before Christmas week. We'll talk a little bit about that. Here's the region I was talking about in the Inland Empire, if you're unfamiliar, or if you have travel plans before the holiday down the I-15 stretch. This is where 215 and I-15 meet together. That will be the most wind-prone area for this upcoming event. Okay, uh, what kind of winds are we talking about? These are the wind corridor areas shaded in dark green and especially yellow. Wind gusts as high as 40, 45 miles per hour in the Cajon Pass. Elsewhere, though, this is a weak Santa Ana wind event. Low humidity. Humidity has already been low. Uh, it's going to continue to be low Thursday right through the weekend. We're talking uh, low humidity in a lot of places in the teens and lower 20s. So dry air, uh, you feel that on your skin, uh, and you feel that uh, on the vegetation as well, and that's why fire risk continues to be elevated. Warm temperatures. This is a little warmer event uh, by the time we get into Friday and Saturday. I think Saturday will be our warmest day. Some locations along the coast touching 80, all areas well in the 70s. We'll see a significant warm up too in our mountains when we go from Wednesday through Saturday. Now, I do want to mention the cool nights because despite the warm days and dry air, the cool nights, even on the coast and valleys, a lot of locations in the upper 30s to mid 40s. Now, for areas in our mountain valleys, it'll be really cold, below freezing. Uh, for several nights in this dry Santa Ana wind. Probably the coldest temperatures look to be Thursday morning and Friday morning in those uh, mountain valley areas. Storm next week, it is quite possible. Projections continue to indicate the potential for a storm around December 18th through 20th. Problem is the storm is breaking away from the main Pacific jet stream and slowing down on our latest computer model guidance. So uh, the exact arrival is highly uncertain. It does look like the first storm though would come in before Christmas around the 21st of December. And that brings us above normal precipitation potential because it is a very tropical type of storm taps into atmospheric river moisture and it's very slow moving. We just don't know when exactly it'll get here and how strong it'll be when it arrives. The jet stream looks to get very active at the end of December. We've been talking about this for a while now, uh, but this jet stream appears to get consolidated and extended and finally could reach the West Coast by around Christmas time. So keep that in mind if you have travel plans for late December. We are in an El Nino. We've been talking that for months now, uh, and it's a strong El Nino along the equatorial Pacific Ocean, which just means that the waters are much warmer than average in that region along the equator. 
This is a satellite view showing you how well established it is along the equator. There's a lot of other areas in the eastern, western, and northern Pacific that are above normal as well. But El Nino, uh, the warm phase along the equator really stands out as an anomaly or much warmer than usual. Now, despite that, El Nino, we are starting off dry and very dry in the southwest in Southern California, much below average so far for this water year. But the year is still young uh, and we're just barely into December. Okay, if you made it this far, this is an important slide, I think. This is not just a future forecast. This is what's already been happening in the Pacific and our atmosphere and how our jet stream has been taking shape. So starting November 1st through early December, we do see some changes going on. We see more blue, which is deeper low pressure in the Gulf of Alaska and more orange and red in the Central Pacific. So we're getting a gradient, a stronger difference between colder than usual and warmer than usual, strengthening that jet stream. And we see a little bit of a dip uh, in the Eastern Pacific that might explain the big storm they had in Seattle and the Pacific Northwest. So now we just need some of this Pacific energy to translate and move east, making it closer to the West Coast and of course, California. But we do see that the warm El Nino conditions along the equator are starting to influence our atmosphere. Now it's a matter of where that line on the screen there or jet stream exactly sets up. That'll be the stormy location. Stay tuned.